I'm Adam Thompson. I'm director of product at Phenom. I'm responsible for all of our high volume and automation solutions. And I'm super excited to have with me Stephanie Worley. She's vice president uh, for talent acquisition at Bright Horizons. Thanks, Adam. So what we're going to talk about today is how Bright Horizons was able to absolutely speed up their hiring process and how they were able to go, but how to get candidates through their pipeline at blazing speeds. <laughs> Stephanie, can you open up by telling us just a little bit of background about Bright Horizons? Yep, absolutely. So we are a family solutions organization that provides um, services for working families from infants to elder care. Um, and we have uh, the, the high volume roles that we're hiring for, which have been impacted by this solution, are primarily our teacher positions and our child care centers. So, Stephanie, I know obviously during the pandemic, absolute disruption for everybody in the child care space. Can you tell us a little bit about what life was like during the pandemic? And then how did you adapt coming out of the pandemic? What were some of the challenges? Well, I don't know if anybody heard, but there was a child care shortage. Um, <laughs> so uh, we, you know, we were pretty impacted by the pandemic and we had to shutter some of our, shut down some of our centers. Um, but we actually had centers that stayed open the entire pandemic and provided services to um, frontline workers like doctors, nurses, those in hospitals. So um, did a lot of great work during the pandemic, but um, we had a lot of teachers that left us. And so we were short, once we started opening our centers up, we were short thousands of teachers. And so that was just adding to the childcare issue that working families were having. So it was impacting our students, families, it was impacting maybe some of your companies that you work for. Um, so it was a huge gap for us and we needed to hire quickly and as many teachers as we possibly could to care for our most precious assets, those little beings that like to um, toddle around our, our legs as they're growing up. Awesome. So, Stephanie, obviously, there's a lot of challenges that came along with that. Can you kind of talk about um, how you, some of the things that you felt you needed to do as a TA team to help cope with those challenges? Yeah, I think the most important thing for us was we had to find qualified teachers. Um, and we had to find them as quickly as possible. And so we were kind of building the airplane at the same time that we were flying it, right? And so um, we had to rebuild our team. We had to start hiring teachers pretty aggressively. We also had to build a talent pipeline. And so we really were looking for solutions to help us automate the process and make it as fast as possible and as easy as possible for our hiring managers because we were impacting significantly the directors and the teachers that were actually working for us already, right? Because we were asking them to do more and more every single day and really outside of their normal job. It wasn't just about taking care of a child anymore, it was about the health and safety of the employees as well as the children that we were caring for. So I was really lucky to, to get to go on a lot of this journey uh, with you and the team, Stephanie. Can you talk about how we got started on solving those challenges? Yeah, so Adam went to a conversation with our CEO and said, I can do this faster for you. No. <laughs> Um, so we actually started with a, he came, we had some conversations and he said, look, what about this? What if we try to automate the process of getting people to the interview as fast as possible, right? And so we rolled out um, in about 50 locations across our most difficult markets to hire in. So Boston, Seattle, and Chicago. Probably hindsight 2020, not the best locations to try it in given the fact that we had a low applicant pool. Um, but we saw some pretty good results from uh, that piece of it. I think we had a controlled rollout, so that allowed us to really optimize on the fly. So Adam's team was, you know, literally we would call him and say, here's the issue, and they were fixing it for us. Um, and so I think the difference is, and we were just discussing this while you all were waiting for us to get started, was, you know, our operations function, before TA was kind of like TA, right? They're over there doing their job. Um, and literally my CEO sent me a mug that said speed matters, right? And so, <laughs> 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 
and so I was like, great, I get it, speed matters. And so we were super focused on um, bringing our key business stakeholders into the, into the fold. They were really focused on how can you get us people as fast as possible and the best people as fast as possible. Um, and we focused on the most difficult markets. I'm going to look for one of those coffee cups after this. <laughs> Let me give you just a very quick explanation of what Bright Horizons' new process looks like. I'm not going to tell you to go to brighthorizons.com. There are real recruiters on the other side of that that you would be booking with. But basically, what a Bright Horizons candidate can do today, if they're interested to be a teacher there, they can go to their site whether it, and interact either with a chat bot or just hit the apply button on their career site apply, get instantly screened, and if they're qualified, they'll get a congratulations message, and they can instantly schedule for a 15-minute conversation with a recruiter. The end-to-end -end process takes about a minute and a half. Um, it is absolutely blazing fast, and there's lots of things that can happen. Uh, for example, if I'm an alumni, if I was referred, I'm basically guaranteed to get that interview. Um, if I am somebody that is a little bit lower on the qualification bracket, a recruiter is still going to be notified, but I'm not going to get, be able to get an instant interview. It can also uh, pull out certain candidates from automation based on different factors. And if a recruiter's schedule is completely booked or maybe they're on vacation, it will instantly escalate and let somebody else get pulled into the loop to let them know that there's a qualified candidate waiting to talk to somebody. So that's the basics of the experience. Obviously, there's a lot of change management involved with, with something like this. Can you kind of talk through, Stephanie, how you approach change management? Yep. Um, so I think, you know, for us, it was really talking to the team about what do you need to know, what, what, what's the benefit of doing this, right? We all know, some of you might be frontline recruiters in this room, but we all know that recruiters like to control their calendar, and so <laughs> they don't want anybody doing anything with their calendar, and so we had to really walk them through the business reasons as to why we wanted to do this. Then we shared with them, you know, here are the results of the pilot that we did, and then we built with Adam um, kind of a continuous feedback loop where they were able to give us continuous feedback and then we made modifications and we made a lot of modifications based on things that we didn't even think about that once they all started using it, they were like, we'd rather it be this way or that way. And so we were able to make those modifications and then I think that was the biggest piece was the fact that they could see that we were listening to what the, their feedback was and then we made the changes and we're able to roll that out to them pretty fast. So obviously we've been, I think nationwide for almost six months now. Yeah, right around Q3. Uh, uh, right about, yeah, right about six months now. Uh, we're, in every, we're live in every Bright Horizons location in the United States, all teacher roles, lead teachers, lots of different uh, positions like that. Can you talk a little bit about the results? Yep. <laughs> so um, they actually have been pretty good. We, um, looking at Q3 to Q4, we saw about a 7% decrease in the time that a candidate is in our process. Um, when I compared February to the quarter that we started in, in Q3, we're at a 30% decrease in the time that they're in the process. And so we've really optimized that review and, and screen stage um, so that we're getting them to interview as quickly as possible. So, I mean, it's been a pretty good, uh, pretty good thing for us. <laughs> I know one of the numbers that we had talked to, uh, about together recently is the percentage of hires that are coming through this process now. I think the latest result was like 99.5% of hires are coming through this automated process for your teacher roles. Yep, absolutely, and I think um, the key there is is that we can track those who do and those who don't get through the automated process, and what we're finding is it is screening out the right people for us, right? Because we're really not hiring very many of the people who get the automated and who don't get the automated interview. They still can apply, they can still go through the process, we still do outreach, um, but the qualified candidates are the ones that are getting through and they're the ones that we're hiring. Can you talk a little bit about what's next for Bright Horizons? Yeah, I mean, I think that where we're going specifically um, with this technology is really around, um, we're potentially looking at pulling in um, the, uh, 
video interview, so video assessment, sorry, um, <laughs> video assessment into the process. Um, we're looking at customizing the workflows, so market by market, so I'm not sure if you know this, but in the childcare industry, there are different regulations and requirements based on the state and or location even within a state. And so if we can customize those requirements even more, we think that will be a, more of a benefit. So it's really locally optimized. Um, and then I think, you know, for us, early talent um, is a huge, huge focus, just even outside this technology from a Right Horizons perspective, because we've got to get folks interested in this industry again and get them as early as we possibly can. And I'll just put a plug in that we have an amazing program where we pay for somebody to get their degree to become an early childhood educator. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, so that's really where we're focused. That's awesome. So we've got some time since we weren't able to do the demo today. Would love to see if anybody in the audience has any questions. It looks like there's one in the front row. First of all, thank you for supporting your healthcare systems because that was amazing. Um, the second thing is, how did you how do you figure that you got the ninety two percent apply rate? Like, how do, what what do you think those was the biggest factor to get the completion rate for that? So it we for Bright Horizons and actually it's uh, a pretty standard number across all of our clients that have a high volume workflow in place from beginning of saying I'm interested in a position all the way to whatever the end of the workflow might be for that candidate, whether it be scheduling an interview with um, a Bright Horizons recruiter or getting a really great gracious thank you message if for some reason they didn't meet the qualifications. It's a 92% conversion rate on average. We attribute it to how quick and easy the process is. Stephanie, is there anything you'd add? No, I think that covers it. I mean, I, I think it's really, I mean, for us, it's about speed. I mean, it's about speed for everybody right now, right? Because people can go to the next website and apply. So we've got to make sure that we are capturing the person when we have them. You, you may hear this uh, stat like this tomorrow, but what we typically see with um, high volume types of roles, though, of course, like a teacher at Bright Horizons, it's, it's not exactly a traditional high volume position. Um, the average time to apply tends to be nine to 11 minutes and drop off starts to spike at the three minute mark. So getting that experience within three minutes optimizes the conversion rate. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, right in the front row. Oh, I'm um, okay. <laughs> Go for it and I'll help repeat and for the people in the back. This is amazing that we're able to get people in with such high speed. But one of the areas of apprehension for a lot of leaders is missing the human touch and being able to kind of gauge and experience people face to face or even via video. But my question for you is with this speed and leveraging your trust in the system, how has the turnover been impacted? Are you seeing improvements in your turnover? So let me just quickly summarize in case for the folks in the back. I think the question to summarize is, uh, is some people may have a little bit of apprehension around losing some of the human touch to the recruitment process and how are uh, companies like Bright Horizons preserving quality of hire and making sure that this doesn't spike turnover. Is that fair? Beautiful. <laughs> Stephanie? So we, so we really haven't removed the human touch, right? So we basically what we did is we took out of the process the recruiter looking at your, inter, your resume and calling you and trying to schedule a phone screen, right? So this way, they're still talking to a recruiter. We still do that interaction. They're still interviewing with a hiring manager. But what I will tell you is our attrition has not increased. In fact, our retention has increased. So um, we are seeing, but we've done a lot in our space um, to become leaders around wage and those types of things. So there's a lot of different things that are going into it, but we're still highly focused on the candidate experience, we are a company that focuses on our heart principles and about care. And so the candidate experience is number one for us. But what I will tell you is that my internal stakeholders are very focused on the speed. They want it fast and they're supportive of it. I, I would just add, a, uh, from kind of Phenom's perspective, we absolutely want to keep things as human as possible, even though we're applying automation. And what I would just say is what's What's a better experience for the candidate? What's more human? Waiting three to five days to hear back, which is the average time, or 
if I'm qualified, congratulations message that can be personalized and I can choose to talk to a recruiter based on my availability. I think that, that more preserves a human element than a traditional process. Yeah. I think there's a gentleman in the back that had a question. And we'll quickly go right here. Okay. For a we'll come to you, we'll come to you. Thanks for this. Regarding the automated screening, can you give a sense how many questions, is it through Phenom? Um, did you have to redo your job descriptions to get clarity around those types of things? That'd be helpful. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, how many questions? Do you know, Kamala? Seven. Seven? Seven. <laughs> Seven questions that we're asking, but those are just the baseline questions that we need to ask to determine whether or not they meet the qualifications to be a qualified teacher. So we're not necessarily focusing on our associate teacher roles with this. Um, we're focused on the qualified teacher, so we just need to ask the questions to understand if they're doing that. We have not changed our job descriptions specifically related to that. Great, we'll go to the gentleman in the back and then we'll come back to the front. So are you, um, are you using like the chat bot to initiate like some kind of link to schedule an interview, or how are you doing that? Because they're, I mean, they're going to be considered initially leads if they're coming in through the chatbot. Yep. So we can do both a full hosted application through the chatbot, depending upon the ATS that you're using. If you're on Workday, Taleo, SAP, uh, UKG, um, I, I can't remember all the lists off the top of my head, but in all of those examples, we could do a full hosted application right through that chatbot based experience or through SMS, or through your career site, or all of the above. Um, in Bright Horizon's case, those are initially leads mm -hmm. um, to make it a faster, more abridged process. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have the capability to do it as a host at apply. And then scheduling is completely in line. That's a key here. We don't ever want to bounce a candidate out to another link or another experience if we can avoid it. So as a candidate, if I'm qualified, I get a congratulations and immediately a widget pops up where I can see scheduling availability or when uh, Stephanie chooses to do this for video interviewing down the road, uh, that is completely in line as well. Download nothing, go straight through it. Yeah, absolutely. Hello, um, I saw on your screen there that anyone that's a former former employee gets an automatic um, interview. I know boomerangs are becoming much more popular after the great resignation. So do you have any specific um, campaigns in place to re-engage former employees or any success stories from Bright Horizon specifically to get them to apply or you know any other companies you've seen? Yeah, we actually just um, launched uh, the alumni, an alumni portal through Phenom. Um, and so we have had um, some really aggressive campaigns to boomerang back. I will tell you that um, rehires tend to be um, one of our number one sources anyway, and we've seen that increase since we started a really concerted effort to re-engage them in the culture of Bright Horizons. Um, we see people leave and then they come back within six months because they really love the culture there. Um, and so for us, it's a huge focus, which is why we, we allow them to get through the process as quickly as possible. And in fact, you know, we've even gone to the, to the um, point of saying, you don't even really necessarily have to do a recruiter screen. We're just going to put you immediately with that, that hiring manager or we'll ping the hiring manager and say, hey, this person has indicated that they want to come back. Yes, we move them forward. So um, we're really, really focused on the boomerang piece. Awesome. We've probably got time for two more questions. Did you have one? Thank you. So uh, my team currently uses uh, a different self-scheduling tool for their candidates. Works really well, but the biggest challenge we have is probably getting at best a 50% conversion rate from scheduling to actually having the interview. So I'm curious if you're seeing the same or if you've seen any improvements with, with the tools you're now using. Do you mind if I just ask a clarifying question? Do you mean app, uh, qualified candidates actually scheduling, or do you mean they schedule and then they ghost? Uh, they schedule and then they ghost. Schedule qualified they candidates ghost. schedule and then ghost, and it's about 50%. Okay. 50%. Yeah. We do have candidates that ghost, um, and that's not abnormal, but I, I don't think it's in, it's in excess of what it was before, probably a little bit better, and they're more qualified candidates, so we're not... I don't want to say wasting time. We're not expending the recruiter's time on somebody who is 
maybe not qualified. Um, so we focus on the candidates that, that are the most qualified. But no, we haven't seen really an uptick in that. There's a new feature that we're launching. Bright Horizons will be one of the first to be on it, which also allows for a candidate to get, uh, basically have to reconfirm the day of the interview or 24 hours before, similar to what you do if you've got a salon appointment or a healthcare appointment, something like that. And then if they don't reconfirm, get a couple of nudges, and then we could gracefully cancel and give them a really easy to come, way to come back into the process. So that's another way, if you've got a really high ghosting rate, like 50%, this could help. Yeah, absolutely. I think we've got time for one more question. Uh, make an assumption with the teachers you're hiring, have a certification to be able to be qualified, right? Yep. Have you explored any other roles that didn't require certification or maybe more entry level positions that as long, you know, skill, hiring for personality and training for skill and that kind of mentality. Yeah, so right now we're really focused on the qualified teachers that have to have the certification or degree, right? Um, but we also hire associate teachers, so it's kind of like a training position. Um, and we are thinking about potentially doing that when we can get to the point of more customization in the workflow so we can test and try. Um, I'm not really comfortable with rolling that out immediately. And we also see a higher conversion rate in our regular process with associate teachers because it's a training role. Um, and so for me, it's not the priority. We need to get the folks that have the, the qualifications. But it's a good question. I, I don't think that we're opposed. And we're actually, we have a call center, and so we're, we're thinking about doing some of this stuff with our call center agents as well. Thank you. Awesome. Um, probably out of time for questions. Stephanie, I would love to throw one last question from me to you, though. For all the folks in the audience who are thinking about kind of going on this kind of a journey, how would you recommend to get started? Talk to Adam, he's awesome. Um, <laughs> well, I did honestly. not pay her to say that. <laughs> honestly, he's fantastic and his team is great. Um, and so, you know, I think it's just making sure that you have the buy-in from the organization um, and be prepared for your recruiters to scream a little bit, um, but they get happier about it um, once they've experienced it. Uh, that's what I would say, and great change management. We had somebody that was dedicated to helping us roll all of this out um, and provided a lot of support, so that's what I would say. Awesome. Stephanie, thank you so much. Thank you. See you.